What you see on screen are quotes by three great geniuses of their respective times. But one of them clearly stands out. I am, of course, referring to Sir Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton is perhaps the most accomplished scientist and thinker ever. His most notable achievements, establishing classical mechanics and physics, describing universal gravitation and developing calculus, are mind-boggling. But Newton somehow achieved most of this at a relatively young age, even though he grew to be quite old. What else did this peerless genius do in all this time? Well, one of the answers is alchemy. Alchemy is a practice that aims, among other things, to find a method for creating gold and discovering a way to cure all illnesses. Though it is largely seen as a joke today, alchemy was taken seriously at various points in history. Evidence of alchemy in the past can be found mainly in Europe but also in China and the Islamic world. The Chinese were some of the first alchemists, and their goals were to cure disease and attain immortality through the proposed elixir of immortality. Mercury played a central role in alchemy, probably since it's the only liquid metal at room temperature and looks cool, and the Chinese suspected it was crucial in order to live forever. So certain were they that they had no qualms about doing the odd taste test. Chinese Emperor Qin Shi Huang famously died by ingesting mercury. Wang, this stomachache is killing me. No worries, your highness. I have a potion here that will fix all your problems. What is it? It's mercury. Come again? It's, uh, it's mercury. Mercury? Yeah. And that will cure me. Uh, maybe. Has it worked before? No. So what exactly are you basing this treatment on? Nothing. Well, that's good enough for me. <sighs> well, 0 for 44. You'll get there eventually, Wang. I believe in you. And that's how the first emperor of a unified China died. Exactly like that, with no creative liberties taken. As you'd expect, his death was a wake-up call for all of China that maybe drinking mercury wasn't the way to go, and the practice was soon abolished. No, I'm only yanking their tails. Chinese emperors, noblemen, and other rich folk who fancied living forever kept dying from mercury poisoning for another 2,000 years. The last Chinese emperor who died like this being the Yongzheng emperor in the 18th century. This brings us to Isaac Newton. Even though he reached the age of 84, which is advanced even for today's standards, he probably didn't do so thanks to the elixir of immortality. It was not for a lack of trying though as he spent plenty of time trying to create the Philosopher's Stone. In fact, he is known to have written over one million words dedicated to alchemy. That's about the length of the entire Harry Potter series, in which the Philosopher's Stone also plays a part. Hell, it's also written by an English person. Wait a minute. I'm going in. Put your hands on your head, Mrs. Rowling, and turn around slowly. <gasps> My god, Isaac Newton! I guess you discovered immortality after all. I refuse to die a virgin! Newton didn't publish any of his alchemical work, preferring to work in secret. He believed he was a sort of chosen one, who was meant to bring light to ancient wisdoms. So sure of himself was he, that he came up with a special name for himself, Jehovah Sanctus Unus, which means Jehovah the Holy One. To us, it can't be hard to understand why a genius like Newton would believe that he could create gold, but we must remember that he knew nothing of atoms or molecules, and he wasn't just making blind guesses either. Alchemists carried out rigorous, repeated experiments that would return the same results every time. They may not have been successful in their ultimate goal, but they played an important role in the development of the scientific method. One of these experiments is called the Tree of Diana, in which an amalgam of silver and mercury is immersed in nitric acid with dissolved mercury and silver. This produces tiny little branches of solid silver, which appear to grow much like plants do. This experiment has been recreated in our times and does in fact work, though you get no more silver out of it than you put in. But experiments like this may have been like a carrot on a stick for alchemists, since they interpreted it as proof that metals can grow. 
Another famed intellectual who dabbled in alchemy was Robert Boyle in the 17th century. Yep, that Boyle from high school, with his P's and his V's. He is considered the father of modern chemistry, so it's funny that he may have only started studying chemistry to get into alchemy. Keep in mind that this was all the same thing in his time. He was confident enough that the Philosopher's Stone was just over the horizon that he lobbied the British Parliament to get rid of their ban against gold making. Boyle believed that he had the recipe for something called Red Earth, which was basically the B-tier version of the Philosopher's Stone. Isaac Newton got his hands on the recipe for Red Earth upon Boyle's death, and even a small sample of the stuff. But the creation of Red Earth involved working closely with Mercury, and it may have poisoned Newton since he suffered a mental breakdown only a year after Boyle died. Another possible explanation for this breakdown is that John Locke, a friend of his and yet another historic philosopher, tried to set Newton up with a woman. Isaac, I'd like to introduce you to Lady Mary Generic Surname. The first E has an apostrophe. Mary here is the widow of late Lord William Generic Surname. I've been telling her all about your great accomplishments. She's also rich. <laughs> Come, Mary, we'll circle back to him. He's just deep in thought, you know, being a genius and all. Whew, crisis averted. As for this red earth, we don't really know what Newton did with it for the next 30 years, but we can be reasonably sure that he did not use it to achieve immortality and later write the most popular book series of all time. Not entirely sure, mind you, just reasonably sure. So remember, stay curious and don't drink too much mercury.